It's mostly muscle cars at Nick's Garage. But that doesn't mean you won't find some other very interesting vehicles around this place. A 2015 uh, Mitsubishi Evolution Final Edition, uh, number 14 out of 350 in Canada. And I've done a few modifications, mainly bolt-ons, but still with a stock turbo. And I've wrapped the outside to give it a, it's a tribute to Mitsubishi Evolution uh, since they're not making them anymore. And now we're going to do a little launch and see what the power looks like. While Papa Evo is tearing up the pavement outside, Nick is in the back of his shop, going through a lifetime's worth of parts, finding the ones he needs for his 1970 Challenger rebuild. Here I am now working on the, uh, starting to looking for pieces and parts for the uh, Kowalski project I have, because my car came with the uh, drum brakes in the front, and I want to convert it to uh, factory uh, disc brakes up front. So what I need to do is now I, I've got a pair of spindles, I've got uh, the caliper brackets, I've got the calipers, I've got the discs, but then you need all the hardware. Like you gotta have the right, all the right bolts. So here's mixed up bolts of drum brakes, uh, uh, disc brakes or whatever. So I gotta look, find, see which is the right part to put for my uh, uh, assembly for the front discs. And as you can see here, some of the heads are very thin. For a reason, is to fit behind the uh, disc brake. So this is my next project right now. I've got to start looking for all these bits and pieces. And then again, I've also got U-bolts. And of course, they all have the long, long nut like this. So I got to find a nice four pieces, four nice pieces, I, I should say, with the original genuine nuts. Clean them, sandblast them, have them really uh, detailed so I can put them on my uh, suspension on the rear. Then I've got the Dana to overhaul. That's the next thing to do. But for now, we're gonna start doing the uh, suspension and the front uh, K-member with the uh, brakes and suspension so we can put the car on the floor. I got a set of leaf springs. They're genuine, factory. But from what I see, uh, he's added one spring, uh, the previous owner. But it doesn't matter. I'm gonna change the bushings here, which is the front side of the uh, leaf spring. I got a new shackle kit that I just found because of course, that too was damaged when I bought the car. And uh, I got a set of shackles. I got to get a U-bolts. I'm going to restore these springs with the uh, new uh, clamps and new sliders, which I'm going to uh, order from the US very soon. Get that done. Here's the shackles. Here's the rear shackles for the uh, lead springs that I'm going to install. And these are genuine Chrysler pieces. So what you got the hangers, you got the lead spring, and uh, the front brackets, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Then we can start putting the assembly up on the car. But as you can see right now, it's still on the, uh, what I call the buggy wheels. Then I got my fuel lines right here. I don't have the clips, but I'm going to get those on order too. So slowly but surely, I'm going to start making a list and add all these little things that I'm missing. And I started doing some restoration over here on uh, the front end parts. As you can see here, we also need the brackets that holds the U-bolts in place. But this is the piece that came with the car. As you can see, it's not a, it's a, it's been repaired, but I'm not gonna go with this. I'm gonna go find another pair so I can make it nice and clean my job. And of course I have, you can see here, two lower control arms, one here and one there. And the problem is, I was lucky enough to find another one because on the right front lower control arm, it was bent. This here was on an angle. I, pre I believe the car pre previously had an accident. So anyways, I located one of my uh, spare parts in the uh, container, brought it back out here, had it sand blasted, and very soon it'll be ready for installation. Then I found a pair of spindles, brackets, I've got my calipers, 
Here are the, uh, the Hemi torsion bars. It comes with a full 40 car from the factory. Here's my front sway bar, the bolts for the uh, leaf springs, front sway bar brackets, front hangers for the leaf springs, my strut rods, torsion bars, and so forth. And we have a long way to go. So this is just the start. It's gonna be a long ride. But, got no choice, we gotta do it. That's it. Mick knows every nut and bolt that makes up a 1970 Challenger. And he knows how controversial using an incorrect part can be. But restoring the Kowalski project is bound to ruffle a few feathers. And uh, a lot of people have a controversy uh, telling me, uh, Nick, what mirror are you gonna put on your car? Well, this car that I bought came with a basic chrome non-remote control mirror. It's not a race mirror, it's just a plain, Simple, standard mirror. Simple chrome, and uh, I like it. It looks simple, but that's not the movie. This is not the mirror they used in Kowalski. They are sort of like a Camaro mirror, apparently. Someone was telling me it could be a Camaro mirror. But anyways, just to uh, mention it, this is what it looked like. Sort of like a square uh, glass with a simple base. It's not exactly 100%, but here it is. This is sort of what Kowalski was driving with, and this is what the mirror that came with my car, plain simple mirror. Now, I have the debate which mirror I'm gonna put on my car. I don't know. I'm a, uh, I, uh, I like to keep my car as uh, simple as possible. And I know this car came with a standard mirror. I have it. I feel like putting it back. I know it's not the one they use in Vanishing Point. But then again, people are gonna tell me, you wanna put a mirror like this on your car? I know it's the right thing that Kowalski had. But you know, look, I'm not crazy about it. So for now, before I do any installation anyways, I'm gonna think about it. But at the moment, I'm thinking of going with the simple Chrysler non-remote control mirror. Which one of these mirrors would you put on the car? Leave a comment and let Nick know. Plus this is a, it's a jumper mirror. I'm not saying it's a GM mirror or for a Camaro, but it's sort of something like the one in the, they had in the, in the first film, Vanishing Point. But what I really like is a genuine Chrysler mirror. Very simple. It's a little bit smaller, but you know what? This is what came with my car, and I think I might stay with it. Someone asked me on the uh, comments if the scoops were painted with the hood. Well, not really. Here they are. I'll show you an example of one of them. Like I mentioned before, there it is. The Riley Hood for a 1970 Dodge Challenger. There we go. And of course, they didn't come with the car. One was missing, the other one was damaged. Again, another pair I had to go pick up. And you know, look, even when I bought the engine, the motor mounts were missing. Here, motor mounts and brackets. Got them right here. Didn't come with the car, spare set. Just thank God I got a lot of pieces for e-body. Man, piece after piece after piece. Yes, it adds up, it adds up. You know, uh, I know a lot of guys that gone into restoration and uh, they know what I'm talking about. It gets costly and there's a lot of pieces uh, that I'm lucky with that I have for an e-body. I've been saving for so many years, but now I'm down to the last few pieces. And of course, they're gonna end up on my Kowalski project. And then put it together and let's drive it. Nick knows that he has a long way to go to the finish line on this one, but he's happy to have everyone along for the ride. And speaking of long hauls, Ron just dropped in all the way from Calgary, Alberta, and Nick just had to get a look at his vehicle. It's gonna be something unusual. It's uh, well, Ron here is all the way from Calgary, so I'm sure he didn't drove here in the winter months with a uh, muscle car. But let's take a look at what he came with. And by the night, and by the way, he slept here uh, overnight. There it is. My God, muscle truck? Is that a muscle, muscle truck? truck? Yeah. I guess you could call I'm it sure that. there's a lot of torque in that thing. Uh, 1,850 foot pounds. 1,850 foot pounds. Yeah, 550 horsepower. 2015 Peterbilt. Wow. Well, let's take a look inside. Yeah. Let's bad. see. Wow, check that out, man. That's the office. That's the office. I'm going to go climb in. I want to see what it looks like. And check it out, eh? And you know, matter of fact, Wallace well, come here twice to my shop. And you know, the last time he came here at seven in the morning, he slept uh, the night before outside in his rig right here. 
waiting for me to open up my shop at early in the morning hours. And here he is today again. Where did you sleep last night, Ron? Right here. Again, he slept in his truck last night. Yeah. Look at this, man. How much torque you said this thing has? 1850. 1850 torque. Now that's a torque monster. But then yeah. again, look what it's pulling. This is beautiful. Wow. This is completely different from a muscle car, man. Let me tell you. But this has got the classic look. It does, eh? This is this is the old classic look, and I like that. This, is that right? Have the same look for 60, 70 years. Here's a man who knows his trucks. Yeah. Nice. Peterbilt. Yeah. And look at this, man. This, this is this is crazy, man. How far you go? Is this 100 kilometers an hour? Uh, this this truck will top out at about 130. 130. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I sit right at the speed limit. I'm not much for speeding. A lot of regulations. Yep. And pretty soon, it's all going to be all electronic. Is that right? The states is now. You can't have logbooks anymore. Is that right? So you electronic. So in other words, you can't cheat. You can't cheat no more. Look at that. Oh. And I don't want to cheat anyways. Twelve hours a day is enough. It's true. Why not? You know, you know, a lot of people work eight, nine hours a day. You're making twelve on the road. It's enough. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. But look at that long shifter there. No, not a pistol grip. No, you know? it's not. <laughs> I know some rat rods that put shifters like this in them. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. This one's an 18 speed. 18 speed, eh? 18 speed, yeah. God, I don't know how to use this thing. No. This is totally different on my ballpark, but you know it's, what? It's really not. It's, a, it's five speed, yeah? essentially. Nice. Yeah. This but is we only use four. One, two, three, four. And you, this is very comfortable drive, uh, 12, 12 hours? 12 hours, and I feel great. Is that it, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And that's exactly how I sit. I sit lower. Yeah? You don't see the hood, right? I can't see the hood. Yeah, I like to I see, can just see the. I can just see the... I like, I like to see that emblem there on the hood, at yeah. the end of the uh, ornament, I should say. Yeah, the wing. Yeah. yeah. That's all I can see. If you go coast to coast? All over North America. Oh my God. Even California, Florida? Yeah. So you've done them all? Yeah. You know, I thought I did a lot of mileage on cars. I think you did more than I did, for sure. <laughs> well, this is a 2015. It's got 600,000 K. 2015? I got a Hellcat 2015 with 9,000 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> There's no air in it. It's, it's, it's low on air pressure. Okay. A little bit. It's all right. It's all good. And Ron, this is your truck? This is my truck. It belongs to you. Yeah. Check it out. Hey, look, he had it all nice and shiny before he left his house in Calgary, Alberta. And of course, you get on the highway up here now in uh, part of Canada. It's all snow and ice and dirt. Look at it. He has a lot of chrome on this vehicle, a lot of polished metal, I like can see. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah, he left Calgary, it was all nice and shiny, and look, drove through the highways in Canada, of course, with the snow, the salt, and whatever, this is what you get. But this is one beautiful vehicle, uh, Ron. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah. I'm very happy that you came by. Thank you. Very uh, happy. Yeah. And here is a viewer from Calgary, Alberta. Ron, thank you for everything, man. Look thank at that. You. Here we are another week at the shop and uh, it's uh, Saturday morning. I want to open up all the mail that we got uh, during the week. And uh, you guys, uh, my viewers have been sending things. You're keeping my postman pretty busy. But anyways, here we are today. Let's open them up and see what we've got. And here, and this one's from Kenny from Florida. Oh, I've been to Florida many times. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay. Nick. One deserves this old hustle stuff jacket. Wow. Kenny, Merry Christmas to you too. Hustle stuff. This is this is historical. My God, you got me this. This is a genuine Chrysler jacket. Hustle stuff. This is way before the recollection of Mopo Performance. This was in the early 70s. I believe also in the late 60s. Wow, this is real hustle. This is when I started working with Mopar when hustle stuff was around. This is a rare piece. Kenny, this is something rare, let me tell you. Wow, look at it, just my size, perfect. Thank you. Here we go, next one. And this is from uh, Joshua from Louisiana. First time from Louisiana, let's check it out. Louisiana. I was partly French before, no? Yeah, there's the fruit leaves of Quebec. Yeah, there's some part of Quebec in Louisiana, you see, eh? Not a good writing letters, as I'm sure. Don't worry, I'm just as good as, I write them just like you do, handwrite. Part of my heritage, my French heritage. Thank you for all. 
Merci beaucoup, uh, Joshua. Merci beaucoup. Here it is, the flag of Louisiana. Thank you, Joshua. Merci beaucoup, là. Here we go. Arkham, Ontario. All right. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, check it out. Keychains. Satellite Plymouth Duster. Wow, these are all Mopar keychains. Gary, thank you very much. Yeah, we got a Dutch in the family. We have a Plymouth in the family. Satellite, no, but I know someone who has one. Gary, thank you very much, Gary. From Ontario. Here's another one. And this is from Bobby from uh, Mineral Bluff, Georgia. I like all these packages. They're all sealed solid, man. You gotta be trust. Here it is. Flag of Georgia. Thank you, Bobby. Calgary, Alberta. Last time I was in Alberta was uh, back in the early 80s. When I was there on a business trip with a couple of uh, clients of mine. And what do we got here? Oh, just like my, uh, one of my police cars. Oh, what do we got here? An old Mustang and a Camaro. 350 on a winch on an old Mustang. And this is a uh, 81 Z28 Camaro. Nice, nice car. Just like the one that Oliver has, same thing. And here we got a flag, another flag from Alberta. You know, I got a couple from Saskatchewan. I've got a couple from Alberta. I got a couple from British Columbia. I got nothing from Ontario. And here it is, another one from Alberta. Trevor, thank you very much from Alberta. This is from Scott from state of Utah. Let's go. And this is from Scott. Nice. Here's the flag of Utah. Here's the flag of Utah. Finally got it. Here it is. Thank you, Scott. I've got it right here now. Put it up in my shop. All right. Here's another one. Steven from Florida. Let's open it up. Oh, what do you got here now? Let's see. Oh, I know this flag. I know there's a TV show, uh, Chicago, and I see their flag on the TV, and I know this is a, a flag of the city of Chicago. And uh, Steve, thank you very much. I'll put it up in my shop. You guys, it's overwhelming. Thank you very much. It's overwhelming what I keep getting here every week. I keep looking forward to the postman that comes in and brings me boxes, brings me packages, and who knows on what part of the planet it comes from. But you know what? It's very interesting. And they're still coming in. And here's another one. Jason from Florida. From Jason. Jason, thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, here we got a box. And this is from Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, isn't that where Bill Clinton is from? I know he has an old Mustang, Bill Clinton. All right, here we go. Oh, what do we got here? A coffee mug from the state of Arkansas. A cap for the cold weather. Nice. The flag of Arkansas? That is one flag I don't have either. Thanks, Tracy. And here's our last one for today. And this is from Kim from Florida. Wow, check it out. 1970 Dodge Challenger Kowalski. Of course, vanishing point. This is what we're all about here right now. We're building a project with one of my favorite cars, also my dream car, Vanishing Point. And here it is. Vanishing Point favorite forever. Good luck with the dream. Kim and Diana, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll put it up in my office. There it is. Thank you guys for everything you guys sent me. If you want my address, it's all on the, uh, the about page on uh, my channel. You can see it. And uh, right now, we're just gonna go hang up all our flags we got today. I hope I don't run out of room very soon, but uh, I gotta find a place to put these flags up. Thank you all. Like and subscribe, and thank you for watching us on YouTube. Thank you to every single one of our viewers. We truly appreciate you all for your time, for your comments, and your questions. You'll find our mail and email addresses on the About page. And there are links for the Nick's Garage Gear Shop, where you can pick up a perfectly sized piece of merchandise while supporting the channel. And of course, a big thank you goes out to our patrons, who've chosen to make monthly pledges of support through the Nick's Garage Patreon page. Haven't heard of Patreon? Not to worry. Check out the link and you'll find a video with Nick explaining how it works.